It's been exactly... Wait, wait a second. So, September, October, November. Yeah, yeah. Five months since the official launch of Ampere GPUs until this right moment. And I finally have a chance to check one out. Actually, four of them, but from within the same series, that being the RTX 3060 Ti. <laughs> Hi guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. While others have started from the top with their Ampere coverage, I'm sort of going backwards with it because, because this is what I currently have on my disposal. Even after all of this time has passed since the launch and even after trying multiple times in reaching out to some of the manufacturers that I work closely with, it just wasn't possible to get them earlier so it is what it is at the moment, these are really hard to come by. Enough about that, let's just jump right into it. Here I have Gigabyte's Eagle OC, Gainvart's Ghost OC, Palette's regular Dual and Zodax Twin Edge OC model, and these four RTX 3060 Ti's are ones that are generally speaking more affordable versions for this series, compared to something like from Oros or ROG series, but since the whole market situation is completely out of order, at the moment it's hard to relate them to anything close to the true meaning of affordable. So, what's my approach for this comparison? Since I get a lot of questions along the line of will a Model A of GPU perform better than a Model B of GPU within the same series? Let's say in this case, just for example, does Zodex RTX 3060 Ti Twin Edge has better performance than Gigabyte's RTX 3060 Ti Eagle? And moving forward, if I get a chance to do more comparisons like this with multiple different models within the same series, I will most likely do it again, just like I'm about to. So, to a question like that, I would give you a simple answer that goes like this. Do not burden yourself with the performance within the same series of GPUs, like in this case the RTX 3060 Ti, because there is little to no difference between them in that regard. Yes, there are some cases where there will be some minor differences, but it's so negligible and easily compensated by doing some manual overclocking that it's just no worthy giving you a headache. Bottom line, in terms of the raw gaming performance, they all perform the same, basically within a margin of a measuring error. So what should you be looking at is how loud and effective is the cooling solution that a particular card has among itself and others. Just to go by example, Gainward's Ghost OC model has a declared GPU boost clock of 1695 MHz, while Palette's dual model has that a bit lower at 1665 MHz, but the performance difference was basically next to none. These mentioned GPU boost clocks are not even important in a sense it's something to go by, because once the card gets fully loaded during gaming, those clocks are far surpassed, reaching 1.9 to 2 GHz in short peaks, thanks to Nvidia's GPU Boost 5.0 feature. As you can see here, all cards were roaming more or less around the same mark, depending on the game title, and most importantly, its cooling situation. You'll also see that there is a dual OC model of Palette's card with slightly higher clocks, but there's no need for going after it since you can do that manually. And this is the reason why I only fully tested one model out of these four when it comes to raw performance output, as there's no point in testing them all out in every single game, because as you just saw the difference is minimal, or to say at least nothing that should bother you next to other purchasing key points. And this is why you shouldn't have to worry or be bothered about the gaming performance in general within the same series, even if there was some difference between them, again, it can be solved just by pulling a slider in one of the overclocking utilities, and voila, you're done. You will have the same or even more performance as those cards with higher factory overclock, and all of these cards are a perfect example of just that. Because of this small difference in performance between the models within the same series, not just in this case, but generally speaking, as I mentioned earlier, what should you be looking at is how their cooling solution performs in regard to keeping the temperature and the noise down. This should be a main buying point before all in my opinion, unless you really like how a certain card looks, but that's a risk you will have to take in regards to everything else that makes a card. Anyhow, let's take a closer look at just that. All of the models have a dual 90mm fan configuration, except Gigabyte, which has a 92mm one. It will be interesting to see what difference this brings in, if at all. 
they all also have a pretty nice chunk of aluminum heat sinks attached to the GPU, memory and power design, some separated into more pieces, some as a single piece, with three heat pipes going through them, while Zodax 1 has four. It's actually among the heaviest ones, but that doesn't have to be an indicator of a good performance, but it is something that could promise that. Or is it? As some of you may notice, pallet and gain ward models are basically the same, especially on the back, literally a one-to-one -one copy, while the top part of the shroud is different in texture. This is actually not a surprise since Pellet bought gain ward back in 2005. Funnily enough, the pellet model falls a bit behind in terms of the temperatures, although the cooling setup is the same. The reason why is that is because pellet's model has a completely closed off back portion of that top shroud, as well as a more closed off side portion of it, probably then trapping the hot air within that area. Leaving everything as is and getting some heat into the cards, the quietest card turned out to be GameWard's RTX 3060 Ti Ghost OC model with just a bit below 46 dBA of loudness and 66 degrees Celsius for GPU temperature. Basically the same noise profile had Zodax Twin Edge OC model, but it was 3 degrees Celsius warmer than GameWard's model, making the Ghost OC model that much more impressive. The loudest one was Gigabyte's Eagle model at almost 50 dBA, but it kept the GPU temperature lower compared to Pallet and Zodak at the same level as the Gainward model at 66 degrees Celsius. So yeah, as you can now see it here, as I mentioned earlier, even though they have the same cooling solution, Gainward outrun Pallet's model due to more closed off shroud design. And here is how the loudest and the quietest examples out of these four cards sound. With this pretty interesting and rather different results, I went in to check the actual potential of each card's cooling solution by doing some noise normalized testing at 40 dBA. With that being said, all four cards were somewhere in the realm of 14 to 1500 RPM of fan speed. Here GameWart once again showed its cooling potential with keeping the temperature at 72 degrees Celsius at that noise level, while Gigabyte was a close second with 74 degrees Celsius. Pellet and Zodak basically had the same temperature within a measurement error, although Pellet's fans were spinning, at least according to the readout, at around 100 RPM more than it. But with that, it still had the same noise profile as the Zodak with 1400 RPM of fan speed. Looking at this, it seems like Gigabyte could easily have still decent temperatures with even lower noise floor if you were to manually adjust the fan speed to around 15 to 1600 RPM. And the same goes for Gainward's model, so it's not all as it seems at first, which is why it's important to look at the same thing but from a different angle, because it can be a positive surprising turnout for you, as was the case with Gigabyte's Eagle model. This pretty much clears up which one of these four is the best cooling wise, but what about other things? Although it's not that important to majority of users, some of you will probably like to see what's the power draw of these cards, so here's a side by side comparison of the power meter for each model. Coming down to the next important thing in line after cooling and performance, that of course being the car's design, before all that top shroud and backplate, its perceived build quality, amount of RGBs and so on. Looks wise, personally I like the Twin Edge and Eagle models, although both of them do not have that attractive RGB solutions. Actually Zodax one doesn't have it at all, logo just glows in white, while Gigabyte has a really weak one with this a bit tacky addition of a see-through acrylic piece. All of them have plastic back cover, except Zodax one, which looks pretty decent. Although I really like how this honeycomb solution with RGB implementation on pallets and Gainward's model turned out to be, gives them a really cool look. Except for the Zodax model, the other trio does feel a bit cheaply made on their fingers, especially Eagle one on the back, but that's just my subjective feel of it. Lastly, of course, all of them have their own software utility with ability to control and adjust fan speed manually, set up and save different profiles, 
OC scanner or automatic overclocking, temperature, clock, memory, speed readout and so on. While they all do it equally good or bad, depending on how you look at it, for example Gigabytes uses two separate apps to control RGB and the card itself, which is completely unnecessary. I like how gainwards and pellets are also pretty feature packed too, although they are the same app with just different skin. And Zorak is also holding on pretty good in this area too, definitely going into right direction since I've tried it last time, although I do prefer MSI Afterburner among all of them. Coming down to the price, well honestly I don't know what to tell you here, as I mentioned at the beginning, at the moment all of them are way overpriced compared to the original MSRP for the RTX 3060 Ti series. Pricing is all over the place, it's impossible to conclude anything here in relation to other things that each of these cards offer, but at least you now have a clear line sight in terms of which of them has the most effective cooling, while the rest of the decision making is up to you. That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, if you find this helpful please take a second to toss me a thumbs up because that really helps a lot and if you like what you saw feel free to subscribe and if you already are be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video and until then catch you later guys.